Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. So actually, right now in our functional equations playlist, I think we have probably finished like the all the basics that you need to know to solve any functional equation. So we've discussed like lots of uh, methods like the substitution strategy, bijectivity, and so on. And like now we're going to start by like uh, examining some uh, really nice tricks or, or like some nice technique techniques that are sometimes uh, used in some interesting problems and of course we're going to solve uh, like hard problems from now on okay so actually in this pro uh, in this video we're going to discuss a really nice uh, topic uh, in functional equations which is the strategy of fixed points fixed points okay so first of all let's talk like what is a fixed point what what does it mean so actually it turns out that this is really simple so what is a fixed point? Well, a fixed point is like any uh, number alpha, for example, number alpha, that makes the power function f, f of alpha, at this point, it is simply alpha. So as you can see, like it's like here, the identity function for this uh, exact value. So that like it's just simply a fixed point, right? So like if we graph uh, our function, so let's say this is alpha, so we have alpha, like the function will pass through this point. So like it's simply fixing this point because like the image of alpha is simply alpha itself. So like this is just the, fi the fixed point uh, like definition. But it turns out that like this simple uh, definition can solve some uh, interesting problems. And we will see that in our video. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so actually our problem for this video is actually from IMO 19 and 83, which is problem one. Okay, so like this is an IMO problem, which as we mentioned, it uses a very uh, specific principle, which is fixed points. So it's pretty important, right? Okay, so let's take a look at our uh, problem statement. So we're asked to find all functions f from r positive to r positive, so zero is not included here, such that we have the following two conditions. So the first one, is simple f of x fy is equal to y times f of x okay and also the second condition is a limit actually which is uh, like uh, i think we haven't solved any problem that involves limits so far but here we are given that the limit of f of x as x uh, uh, goes to infinity plus infinity is simply zero so as x approaches uh, plus infinity then this f is zero okay so let's actually take a look like how can we solve this uh, functional equation using these uh, two conditions. Okay, so let's take a look. So first of all, we'll simply deal with this functional equation because like we cannot do anything with this one. We cannot substitute, for example. We can only substitute here. Okay, so just like any classical functional equation, we'll begin with the most basic stuff. So let's take a look. So first of all, let's take a look at our functional equation. So f of something equals y times f of something. Well. Think about it. Here we have a free y, right? Exactly. So that means that maybe we can uh, uh, prove that our function f is surjective, injective, or bijective even. So let's take a look. Can we show that uh, f is uh, surjective, for example? Well, we have a free y here. We can simply substitute y with y over f of x, because remember, f cannot be 0. So y with y over f of x, that will make f equals y, right? Exactly, so that means that f is surjective. Great. What about injectivity? Can we show that f is injective as well? Well, yes, we can. Uh, let's assume that f of a is equal to f of b, and a and b are not the same. We can simply use y here. We can substitute uh, once with a and once with b. The left-hand side will be the same, meaning the right-hand side will be the same, meaning that a equals b. Because, as we mentioned, f of x cannot be 0. Great, so that means f is injective and surjective, meaning that f is bijective. Great, so we already have started uh, with a very strong conclusion, meaning that f is bijective. All right, so now let's actually start substituting, because now like we can uh, conclude lots of uh, interesting conclusions. 
So first of all, let's substitute, for example, with the most basic stuff. We cannot substitute with 0, but we can substitute with 1. So let's substitute x and y with 1. So actually, let's write p1, 1, 1. This will give us the what uh, here we're going to have f of f of 1. So we have f of f of 1 is equal to f of 1. But remember, f is bijective, so it's injective. So we can simply get rid of this f with this f, meaning that f of 1 equals 1. All right, this is very great. This is great. OK. So now we know f of 1 equals 1. So probably we can use this to our advantage in, in, this substitution, in this substituting, right? So f of 1 equals 1. Maybe we can substitute y with 1. Well, we're going to get f of x equals f of x. So that's useless, right? So how about we use to substitute x with 1? Well, let's do that, actually. So p1y, what does that mean? That gives us the following. f of f of y is equal to y because f of 1 equals 1. Now, this is a useful conclusion. And if you remember, now actually we can crush our problem because f of f of y equals y. And here we have f of y here. Do you remember what we used to do here? Like we're going to use this to crush f because f of f is y. So if you have only one f, you can make like uh, create a new f in order to destroy the older f. Well, what does that mean? Well, simple. We're just going to substitute p, x, and f of y. Now we're going to see some destruction here because now this f will disappear because it will become f of f of y, so it's y. So now f of x, y is equal to, now we're going to have a new f here, f of x times f of y. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what is this? What do we call this, if you remember? What do we call this equation? f of x, y is equal to f of x times f of y. Well, this is Cauchy functional equation, but not the additive one. This is the multiplicative one, right? So this is Cauchy. Cauchy. Great. So we can immediately say that, if you remember, what, what is the solution for this one? So for this Cauchy, uh, Cauchy equation, we know that f of x is equal to x to c, right, for some constant c. So this is f. Because take a look, x, x y raised to the power c is simply x raised to the power c times y raised to the power c. But of course, we cannot say that unless we show that our function f, uh, because remember, we cannot uh, use this on r positive. We need to show that our function f is uh, it satisfies one of the conditions. One of them was to show f is increasing or decreasing. But also, if you remember, uh, in our uh, previous video about uh, functional equations, uh, we, we, we said that in order to, to show that f is, uh, uh, sorry, uh, f is decreasing or increasing, we simply need to show one thing, if you remember, which is the following. So we need just to discuss the values x that are less than 1 or greater than 1. So we, we, will, we will see, like, if this is increasing, that means f of x is greater than 1 for x greater than 1. So for the values of x that are greater than 1, f of x must be greater than 1. That means that f is increasing. And the opposite, if it's decreasing, so it's less than 1 for x greater than 1. So let's actually try to show one of these, like uh, uh, is f uh, increasing or decreasing. If we can show one of these, then we can immediately say that this is true for all the values x, for any r positive uh, value of x. Okay, so actually now we probably like uh, use this, because remember we didn't use this conclusion uh, for our advantage. Okay, so let's now erase everything and try to show if it's decreasing or increasing. Let's see.
So in order to show f is increasing or decreasing, first let's uh, substitute one value again. So if you saw here, we have f of x if y is equal to y uh, times f of x. So if we can, if we substitute it with the following p x x, we're going to get something nice, which is the following. So f of x f of x is equal to x times f of x. Now actually, does that remind you of anything? Well, take a look. f of something is equal to this something. Well, remember, f of alpha equals alpha. Well, that's exactly what is the defi what the definition of fixed points is, right? So that simply means that x if x is simply a fixed point, right? So we can simply say that x f of x is a fixed point for f. Well, what does that mean? Okay, so so what? Well, let's take a look now. Let's try to analyze uh, the, the, what, the, what does that mean? So simply, let's assume that f of alpha, so let's assume we have the following alpha, such that f of alpha equals, al equals alpha. Now let's try to analyze what does that mean. For example, let's try to use this to our advantage. For example, to substitute with this. Well, simply, if we substitute uh, p alpha, p alpha alpha, p alpha alpha, we're going to get something nice. Now take a look, f of alpha equals alpha. That means this is going to be f of alpha squared is equal to alpha squared. Well, what does that mean? That means not only alpha is a fixed point, but alpha squared is a fixed point. So actually, if x is a fixed point, then x squared is a fixed point. And we can do this that again, right? This will Th that means that x raised to 4 is a fixed point, meaning that x to 8 is a fixed point, and so on. In fact, we can, we can show that x raised to any power of n, uh, this is a fixed point, right? Great. So that means now our claim here was the following. If alpha is a fixed point, then alpha raised to 2 to the power uh, n is also a fixed point for any number n. Well, what now I want you to take a look. Uh, this here. Well, what is f of alpha raised to 2 to n as n approaches infinity? So n approaches infinity plus infinity. Well, we have here two cases actually. So if alpha is greater than 1, then what is this? If alpha is greater than 1, that means this is infinity, right? Exactly. But that, that means that this is zero, right? So this is zero because this is like the same as this. But this is alpha to two to n. And it cannot be zero, right? Because this is in, uh, plus infinity. So plus infinity cannot be zero. So this is wrong. So like uh, alpha cannot be greater than one. So of course this happens if alpha is greater than one. That means that alpha is less than or equal to one, right? So that means that alpha is less than O equal to one. So for example, so actually this is our claim now. So for any fixed point, alpha, alpha must be smaller than or equal to one. Meaning that if you remember, this is a fixed point. So that also means that x times f of x is simply smaller than or equal to one. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what does that mean? Take a quick look here. That means that f of x is less than or equal to 1 over x. Okay. So what happens to the values of x that are greater than 1? So f of 2 is less than 1 over 2. So it's less than 1. Right? So that means that simply f of x is less than 1, less than or equal to 1 for the values of x that are greater than 1. And if you remember, what does that mean? That means that f is decreasing. So now we can actually say that 
f is decreasing. And again, if you don't get why f is decreasing, then go check out the video uh, that probably you will see uh, above here. Okay, so actually that means f is decreasing. And so right now we can say that f of x is equal to x raised to the power c for some constant c for all values of x. So now that means that we know what is f of x. It's simply x raised to c. Because f is uh, decreasing, that means c is negative, right? Otherwise, the f will be uh, increasing. So that means c is negative as well. So actually now we can simply substitute here to get what is the value of uh, c. So let's take a look here. So we have y to c. So here we have x to c times y c squared is equal to y times x to c. So this cancels this. So that simply means that c squared is equal to 1. So c is either 1 or negative 1. But remember, c is negative. That means that c is a negative 1, meaning that f of x is equal to 1 over x. So that means that f of x is equal to 1 over x, and this is simply the solution. So after all of this, f of x is equal to 1 over x is the only valid solution. You can, of course, check that it works. And furthermore, it satisfies that the limit of this function is 0 when x approaches plus infinity. All right, so in this nice IMO problem, we've seen a very like nice technique, which is fixed points. So first of all, we started like any classical function equation. We started by showing f is uh, bijective using this free y. Now this actually idea now should be very like uh, you should be familiar with because we are using it all the time. So whenever we see a free quantity, then we show that f is bijective. Then we use this bijectivity to show that f of one equals one meaning that f of f of y equals y, and then we used like the crusher of the f's, because remember, whenever you have something like this, then you can crush the f by substituting another f inside, and we simply got the Cauchy functional equation, multiplicative version, and then simply uh, after getting that, we wanted to show that f is increasing or decreasing, and uh, we remember that uh, we just simply need to show that, or to find the like the range of f of x where x is greater than 1 and that's exactly what we did here but that was like not uh, like it was indirect not very easy because we needed first of all to realize that x times f of x is a fixed point so like we were interested with this fixed point we analyzed it using some alpha some uh, fixed point alpha we saw that alpha alpha squared alpha raised to 4 and so on are all fixed points then we use this in order to get that alpha must be less than 1, meaning this must be less than 1, meaning that we have the following inequality, meaning that f of x equals x to c, uh, where c is negative. And then we simply found uh, what is uh, our function. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and see you guys in the next video.